Well, thank you, uh, Robert and Lauren. We're going to talk about a big left-hander from Indiana. No, not you. No, not me. Not you. <laughs> Sean Manaya. <laughs> we'll talk about Sean Manaya. And the one thing I can pinpoint, Lauren, to answer your question, is that he dropped his arm slot just a little lower, and I think he's just found a comfortable place that he can deliver the ball over and over. And what it does, too, it gives him a little bit better movement, too. It, it does. And I think, you know, when you look at the early part of his season, he was having trouble throwing the ball in the strike zone. But once you watch him start to throw the ball from this arm slot, he talked about Chris Sale and watching him pitch. This arm slot for him seems to be just very comfortable. The ball comes out. He almost eliminates all left-handed hitters. And it reminded me of a El, teammate that had Sid And Sid Fernandez was one of those guys. Look, almost in real time, they're delivering the ball almost the same. Sid has that kind of low arm slot as well. They're both big left-handers. And they're both guys that are unhittable at times when they're throwing the ball over the plate. Then he changed his changeup, Dan. He made it, you know, you talk about that seam shifted wake. What does that mean exactly? Well, instead of pronating your arm, what you're trying to do is really almost cut that change up and get those seams really spinning. And once it gets in that wake of gravity, it starts to drop. And that's where his pitches are doing now with that change up. See the grip? He's got it right on those two seams. He's gripping it very lightly. Thumb's already off the ball. And the ball just the bottom drops out. I mean, having a changeup like that is a huge weapon for him. You know, Dwan, just watching his last handful of starts, and now you get a front row seat. To me, his body language, when you look at a pitcher, and I know you're, you're a lot like me, you, you watch a game and you watch Manaya now, his body language is so good. He's standing tall, his That's chest right. is up, he's walking to the mound and off the mound, to, out to an inning, off, of, off the mound after an inning, and he's walking with the pace to him. He, it's almost like he has so much confidence in what he's doing right now. And I tell you, you and I both have been there. Right. This bump can be the greatest place and it can be the loneliest place in the world. So true. And when you're locked in like he is right now, and you've been through this in your career, you, were, you were guys, when you're throwing the ball good, you don't care who's up there. You're seeing the glove, you're seeing the catcher. It's an elevated game of pitch and catch, and that's what he's doing right now. Yeah, and he's dictating the at-bats. And when you're that confident, you know what you start throwing? First pitch strikes, because you just don't care who the batter is in the box. You're going to go right after them with your good stuff. Get ahead. And he's always been a pitcher. If you ask anyone throughout his entire career, they have said the same thing. Shamanaya throws it over the plate early and gets ahead. He has plenty of pitches to put them away. The sweeper is one of those pitches that he really finagled with during the early part of the season and started to use it when he was behind in the count. I think the young Alvarez got him to use it um, early in the count or when he was behind. The slider is another pitch. I always think of that pitch, though, uh, as opposed to the sweeper getting back into the count. The slider is the pitch that he puts hitters away. He can make even the great judge look bad at times. I think what is so impressive to me is He's not afraid to pitch into right-handers. And a lot of this, as a righty, they're so comfortable with the ball away from them. He ties them up with a heater. He ties them up with a cutter. He's not afraid to pitch in, and that's the key. You know, you just saw some arm angles. Since he's lower, even his two seam will stay true up in the top part of the strike zone. And you can see what he's done, of course. The first 20 starts of the season, very pedestrian. The last seven have been a difference maker, and it's one of the reasons uh, the Mets have come back from 22 and 33 to be 54 and 31 in that stretch. You can see what he and Peterson, I know you like David Peterson as well, the young left-hander. They're 33 and 11 in their two starts. All the other starters are 43 and 53. So not only is um, Sean Manaya had a big summer, but I think he's been one of the main reasons and going deep in games that they've helped the bullpen, they've helped this Mets team, and this Mets team might be able to run down the Braves. You know, Ron, in the last three weeks, if you had asked me three weeks ago, I thought the Braves had the upper hand with the rotation with Sale and Freed. But the way Peterson and Manai are throwing right now, they've kind of equaled that thing. And that's why I think that the, the Mets have a legit shot to win this wild card. And and thing that they've done, they don't get enough credit for, they hit right after the All-Star break. Some good teams, and they hit good pitching. Yeah, the Mets hit. Uh, they're going to be in the postseason. I think on a personal level, guys, I just wanted to share this story with you. Um, on the last day in Chicago, 
Mania threw a gem. He grew up about 60 miles southeast of, of the Chicago White Sox State in Guaranteed Rate Field. You know that area yep. very well. And there must have been a hundred of his family members there. And as he took pictures with everyone, he had a smile as big on his face as all the family members that were there. It really does take a village, right, to put you in the major leagues or help you get there anyway. And Sean and I had those guys in Chicago on Sunday. That's pretty cool. He's a nice man. Yeah.